guys, welcome back to another one. If you were new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2024 Mazda CX-90, courtesy of Jack G. on Volvo Mazda in York, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So obviously, we are in this one today because this is the first 2024 model year that I have gotten so far this year. This is all new for Mazda for 2024. This is Mazda's biggest, most powerful SUV. SUV built on an all new architecture. It's going to be competing with other SUVs like the Kia Telluride, the Hyundai Palisade, maybe even the Volvo XC90 actually. So anyways, ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering fuel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so there are so many different trim levels for the 2024 Mazda CX-90. First one being the Select, starting at $39,595. Preferred for $43,445. Preferred Plus for $45,900. Premium for $48,900. Premium Plus for $52,950. S trim level for $51,750. S Premium for $56,450. And lastly, the S Premium Plus for $59,950. And so with all of those trim levels, there are actually two different power plants available for the CX-90. First one is going to belong to all of the non S trim levels essentially. That one is powered by a 3.3 liter turbocharged inline six cylinder. That one puts out 280 horsepower at 5,000 RPM, 332 pound feet of torque coming in at 2,000 RPM. Power is going to be sent to all four wheels through an eight speed automatic. Zero to 60 time for this one coming in at approximately 7.2 seconds with MPG numbers coming in at 24 in the city, 28 on the highway, taking regular unleaded fuel. Keep that in mind because the next engine does and take regular unleaded fuel. But so anyways, then there is that other engine configuration belonging to the S trim levels. That one is actually powered by the exact same engine, but the boost is cranked up to 19 PSI with that one. So a little more power output from the turbocharger, 319 horsepower, 5,500 RPM, 369 pound-feet of torque coming in at 2,000 RPM. Again, sent to all four wheels through an eight-speed automatic, zero to 60 time, estimated six seconds flat with MPG numbers coming in at 23 in the city, 28 on the highway, but again, taking pre premium on lead it fuel. So that's going to be a big difference between those two. So before we do any kind of fun acceleration or paddle shifter test in this thing, because there are paddle shifters actually, did want to mention to you guys the drive modes. And so it is called MI drive. It is located directly in front of the shifter. And those drive modes will include sport, off-road, towing, and normal, essentially adjusting things like the shift points and the throttle response. So now that we got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and put the CX-90 here to the test. Uh, let's actually start by testing out the paddle shifters here. I'm going to put it in that sport driving mode and let's see how quickly they're actually going to react for us here. All right, you guys, so before we do this, uh, just put it in the sport driving mode. We don't have that S trim level, by the way, with us. We just got the regular premium plus. So uh, now in first gear here, let's go ahead and test out the paddle shifters. Woo! Okay, not the very quickest paddle shifters I've ever tested, but they're actually not bad. I will say that they do react pretty quickly, but not as quickly as some of the other vehicles that I've tested. So I don't mind them. And I do always like the paddle shifters are available, especially on SUVs, because we're going down a massive mountain right now. So if it were to be snowing out right now, I could just simply do a little bit of downshifting, do a little bit of engine braking, so I don't actually have to hit the brakes going down the hill and risk sliding off the road. So that's another good reason to have paddle shifters. So I do like that. But anyway, now having got that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's give back full control back to the CX-90 here, and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed. All right, third gear, go. Oh, ah. <laughs> dang, man. Oh, I love the turbo whistle. That's nice. I like that you can actually hear the turbo whistle. This thing is plenty quick. You're definitely not going to have any issues when merging all into the highway, but I didn't expect it to be that, but Mazda always crushes it with their driving dynamics. And it's not just the acceleration that I like about this. There's plenty more when it comes to driving dynamics. So let's get into the braking a little bit. You're not going to have any issues emerging onto the highway. I'll just put it that way. But yeah, touching on the braking here, up front, you're going to get 13.7 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 13.8 inch solid rear discs. As far as the braking feel goes, eh, I wasn't, it's okay. 
it, it's a it's on the firmer side of things but it doesn't come to as quick of a stop as i kind of was hoping for because mazda is geared more towards the driving dynamic side of things so i wouldn't mind it if they brought this thing to a little bit quicker of a stop it just feels like it doesn't come to as quick of a stop anyways then touching on suspension and handling double wishbone type front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bars as far as ride quality goes it's been great definitely didn't have any issues there but as far as steering feel goes that's been amazing always i feel like i always say this about mazda it's best in class steering feel in my personal opinion instantly points you in the direction that you want to go a much heavier steering feel than all of the competition so not that you need a heavy steering feel in an suv but i will say if you're looking for more of a driver's suv it's typically mazda that you're looking for and specifically the cx90 did an amazing job with the steering feel so well done Mazda, certainly don't have any issues there. And actually, next thing I wanna cover is cabin noise. I was going 50 plus miles per hour back there, and a lot of times you will get a decent amount of road noise or wind noise, but with the CX-90, I, I was muttering to myself when I wasn't on camera there, it's really nice. It's a very serene cabin, surprisingly, so I definitely didn't have any issues there either. Touching on visibility, I can see fine out the back. So yeah, rear visibility is perfectly fine, but I will say rain sensing windshield wipers, touching on forward visibility, also comes standard for every single trim level across the board, so I do like that. And if you were to go with that preferred plus trim level and up, you will also get a head-up display, which I am currently looking at, projecting my speed, speed limit, and safety features up onto my windshield. So again, assisting with forward visibility there as well. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Mazda CX-90. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2024 Mazda CX-90 finished in rhodium white metallic, in case you were curious of our exact exterior color name. But just for a little comparison specs between the CX-90 and the CX-9 real quick, compared to the outgoing CX-9, the CX-90 is actually 1.4 inches longer, 0.6 inches taller, one inch wider, but with a 7.5 inch longer wheelbase. So that's really where the differentiation comes in is the wheelbase that should help with handling. But overall, it's not that much different in size than the CX-90 for the rest of it. So. Anyways, let's go ahead and start with where this one is made. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the letter J, indicating that the CX-90 is built and assembled in Japan. JDM SUV here. So let's go ahead and start up front. LED headlights do come standard for all trim levels across the board. LED daytime running lights coming with that, along with the automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark at night, those headlights will turn on automatically for you there. Automatic high beams, though, also coming standard. So when you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams and when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically then bounce it back up to high beam so i always love that honeycomb mesh front grille does come standard on all trim levels across the board there is a matte black finish that comes on the select trim level but all other trim levels are going to get a gloss black finish to that honeycomb mesh front grille so definitely looks good i like the chrome exterior accenting surrounding the front grille as well there is a black front lip that comes standard on the select preferred and preferred plus but there is a silver front lip or silver accent on the front lip coming with the premium trim level and up so i see those air curtains in the bottom corners as well that definitely looks good and i like how the daytime running lights kind of uh are almost incorporated into the front grille a little bit so i like that look the headlights look very nice very aggressive as well so overall i think mazda did a wonderful job with the front end of the cx90 definitely looks like a more aggressive animal than the outgoing cx9 and it drives like it as well so big fan but now let's go ahead and make our way to the side of this one all right so let's go ahead and start up top here aluminum roof rails do come standard on every single trim level across the board you will get some silver upper window trim coming with the premium trim level and up rear privacy glass of course coming standard on all trim levels there is some black fender accents on the non s trim levels you guys can see that and if you're wondering does it actually say anything it actually does it says inline six on the black portion there so in case you're curious about that it's not like a functional fender vent or anything like that it's just kind of like an accent piece i guess you could say on the front fenders that would have been amazing if they did make that functional but anyways by the way those fender accents are going to be finished in chrome or a little chrome accent for the s trim levels then taking a look at the side mirrors they are body color power adjustable side mirrors for all trim levels heated side mirrors will come standard with led integrated turn signals as well then if you were to go with the premium plus trim level and up they will actually also be power folding then taking a look down at the side skirts I always like to mention this so 
body colored side skirts are only going to come on the S trim levels. Otherwise, you're going to get these matte black side skirts with matte black fender surrounds with a chrome accent piece on the bottom portion of those side skirts. So matte black versus body colored if you go with the S trim level versus the non S trim, basically. So then taking a look at the wheel configurations, 19 by 8.5 inch alloys coming standard for the S preferred and preferred plus. And then you will have 21 by 9.5 inch alloys for the premium trim level and up. So not only bigger, but of course a wider wheel configuration for those as well. So anyways, that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so but now since we are around to the back of this one, very small shark fin antenna found all the way to the top there. Rear spoiler with an integrated brake light. There is a rear window wiper fixated to the rear glass as well. Love the design of the rear tail lights. They are gonna be LED tail lights, by the way. You do have some matte black accenting on the lower portion of that rear bumper, but again, it's gonna be body colored if you go with those other trim levels. And believe it or not, there are actually dual exhaust outlets. They are tucked away. Since this is more of a driver's SUV, I would have loved to have seen those exposed personally, but I know the trend right now is to tuck them away to make everything look greener. But anyways, having said that, I do believe you guys know what you have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. <laughs> So but now since we are around to the back of the CX-90, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is a power tailgate for all trim levels actually across the board. You gotta love that. Then if you were to go with the premium trim level and up, it's actually gonna be a hands-free power tailgate. So if your hands are full with groceries or kids, that's gonna be darn convenient. But there is a button on the key fob itself. There's actually a rubberized button on the tailgate itself as well to simply press. So it's gonna automatically then open up. But once opened up, when it comes to cargo space, that comes in at 15.9 cubic feet behind Behind that third row, yes, the CX-90 is a three-row SUV. If that was not enough space, there's a 60-40 split, meaning the third row does fold down, bumping that up to 40.1 cubic feet behind the second row. Then with all rows folded down, bigger than the CX-9, but still not quite as big as the competition coming in at 75.2 cubic feet. So it's still not the largest out there, unfortunately. I was kind of hoping that this one was gonna be a little bit bigger because if you look at the Kia Telluride, that's 88 cubic feet. Hyundai Palisade is 87 point something. The Honda Pilot, the Toyota Highlander, these all come in in the upper 80s in terms of cubic feet. And then there's 75.2 cubic feet for the CX-90. I believe even the Hyundai Tucson and the uh, Hyundai Santa Fe are still bigger than that as well. So I don't know, I was just kind of hoping for a little bit bigger, a little more space. But I will say in that cargo area, you will find LED cargo lighting. You usually don't find that. You got grocery bag hooks back there, got tie down acres. There's a 12 volt power outlet. There's actually a 120 volt power outlet back there. Now that's something you usually don't find. So I loved seeing that back there. And then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you will actually find a little bit of in-floor storage. just probably enough for an ice scraper or something like that. So not a ton, but I'm glad it's there nonetheless. Then make our way up to the rear legroom for that third row. That's gonna come in at 30.4 inches. So what the heck, I'll give this a shot for you guys for reference. I mean, even six feet tall, so not comfortable for adults, but I will say children might be able to fit back there. And the cool thing is about the third row is it actually gives you rear ventilation, like just by the uh, rear passenger's knees back there. So I love that there's rear ventilation back there, but I also love that there's USB charging ports. So most SUVs, most three row SUVs, SUVs, I will say most, but a lot of them still don't give you USB charging ports for the third row, but the CX-90 does, so I absolutely love that. But anyways, cup holders as well, but then making our way up to the second row legroom, that's gonna come in at 39.4 inches. Again, for reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there, but we'll say the second row is definitely done right. So that's plenty of space to start with, but heated second row seats come on the premium plus trim level and up. You can actually get ventilated second row seats as well for the S premium plus trim level. So I love that the ventilation second row is available so that's pretty cool and by the way in terms of seating in that second row you can get bench seating but you can also get captain's chairs and overall seating is available in a six seven or eight passenger configuration so bunch of different setups there if you wanted it but second row usb charging ports come standard for all trim levels and again rear ventilation coming standard as well and if you were to go with the preferred trim level and up you're also going to get rear window sunshades 
I love that stuff. You have a newborn or something driving home from the hospital, put up those rear window sunshades so the sun's rays aren't blinding them on the drive home. So that's always definitely appreciated. But then make our way up to the front seats. Eight weight power driver's seat with power lumbar. It does come standard for all trim levels. Leatherette finish is gonna come with the select. However, the preferred trim level and up, it's all gonna get a leather finish. So I like that. Heated front seats for the preferred trim level and up. Memory settings for the premium trim level and up then. Ventilated front seats coming on the premium plus trim level and up. Napa leather for the S premium and S premium plus and then a quilted Napa leather for the S premium plus as well overall seating was fine no, nothing too crazy it certainly wasn't uncomfortable it was plenty fine for me uh, not the very most comfortable seats I ever sat in but it'll definitely get the job done so no issues for me personally but now let's go ahead and take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping this leather wrapped for all trim levels it will be heated for the premium plus S premium and S premium plus so I love that because it definitely does get cold in Pennsylvania. It's 41 degrees right now, so it is cold in Pennsylvania. Anyways, then make your way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. Got your Mazda logo on the one side, nothing on the other side because all of your buttons are located on the side of the key. You got lock, unlock, the button to pop the rear tailgate there, and the panic button, of course, as well. But it is all keyless entry with a push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my phone on the brake and press that black engine start button located just to the right of the gauges. And so, speaking of the gauge, there is a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster coming standard on the premium plus trim level and up otherwise you're gonna get an analog cluster so we do have the digital gauge cluster it looks dang good and the colors actually change depending upon the drive mode that you put it in so if I were to switch it into sport driving mode here all of the colors kind of shift to red hues and then if you were to take it out and put it in normal driving mode it all goes back to your basic black and white setup but overall I do like the gauges and it is customizable using the steering wheel mounted control is the regular setup you got a tachometer all the way to your left speedometers front and center there is your average miles per gallon on the right it tells you how many miles you have left until you hit empty outside temperature basically everything you possibly want on the uh on the digital gauges and that's what digital gauges do for you they give you a bunch of different customizations there but anyways then making our way to overall interior quality there is a power moonroof coming on the preferred and preferred plus trim levels panoramic moonroof coming on the premium trim level and up there is an overhead sunglass holder that does come standard for all trim levels levels across the board as well led interior lighting all trim levels again home light controls for the premium trim level and up and that's for up to three different garage doors is found just below the rear view mirror there wireless phone charger on the premium plus trim level and up overall when it comes to interior quality i think it's done dang good personally so i don't think it's real wood but i love the wood look it's kind of like a, a light beach wood look on the doors here it definitely looks good i like the brownish pinstriping going through uh, just above the passenger side glove box and uh, right around the air vents up front here as well. So that definitely looks good. It matches the brown pinstriping on the seat. So they did a good job coordinating that. Just in front of the shifter, you got a little bit of storage, 12 volt power outlet to the right of the shifter. You got your dual cup holders. And behind the shifter within the center armrest, you do have dual phone charging ports in there. But to my surprise, it's not that deep of storage like at all. I would imagine you would put most of uh, any storage that you would need in the glove box because this is a lot more shallow than uh, than I was expecting to be honest, but anyways. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen here. 10 and a quarter inch color display coming with the select preferred, preferred plus, and the premium. And then for the premium plus trim level and up, you're gonna get a 12.3 inch color display. So having said that, it is not touchscreen. It's a little bit of a reach for it to be touchscreen, quite honestly. It's all controlled by using the circular dial and buttons located directly behind the shifter. And so I will say it does take a little bit of time to kind of learn how to use all of that. And I still think it would have been nice to have both options. I wouldn't have minded having a touch screen as well, but overall, I'm sure you will get used to it. It is relatively easy to use, but gives you Bluetooth and audio streaming, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, but you get wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay if you go with the preferred plus trim level and up and leaf, so that's pretty cool. Factory navigation system is gonna come on the premium trim level and up, and of course, you can check out your radio information up there as well. So when it comes to the sound systems, there are eight speakers for the select preferred and preferred plus, and then there is a 12 speaker Bose sound sound system for the premium trim level and up. So having said that, we do have the Bose sound system with us here today. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. That's actually dang good. There is a ton of bass. I can't emphasize how much bass there was. It, maybe it was just that song, but that is an incredible sound system for the CX-90, I gotta be honest. So. 
Well done, Mazda. If you're into music, I would 100% recommend that Bose sound system because that was really, really good. But anyways, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen at least is when you do put the CX-90 in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board, but you will also get a 360 degree monitor there to the right for the Premium Plus, S Premium, and S Premium Plus, which is gonna give you that bird's eye view. And all of this is extremely high definition as well, which I absolutely love. But as always, that is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, let me first start by mentioning the CX-9 was an IIHS top safety pick plus. IIHS hasn't tested the CX-90 yet, but I would imagine typically with safety, you only get better from manufacturers. So I would imagine this would also be a top safety pick plus, which is the very highest level, highest rating given by IIHS. But don't quote me on that because it hasn't been tested, but that's what my guess would be. But front side side current airbags do come standard, driver and passenger knee airbags as well. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard, blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, lane keep assist, lane departure warning, adaptive cruise control with stop and go. There's a driver attention monitoring system. and if you were to go with that premium trim leveling up, you will also get front and rear parking sensors as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the CX-90, great driving dynamics. The steering feel and the handling specifically, I love the acceleration is almost overkill for a three row SUV. So that's plenty fine as well. But really, it's the handling that I love on this thing. Excellent styling. Mazda has been crushing it lately with their designs for the CX-50 and the CX-90. I absolutely love that. Really good interior quality as well. I'm definitely impressed there. As far as constructive criticism goes for this one, I definitely wanted more space. When I heard about the CX-90 coming out, I was thinking to myself, I wonder if this is actually going to compete space-wise with the Telluride and the Palisade and the Pilot and the Highlander but it doesn't still, at least here in the US. So I was looking for more of a 84 cubic feet plus kind of space level, but it came in at 75, so that's unfortunate. But anyways, the only other thing I can really think of is the engine. I love that it's a turbo inline six that sounds so freakishly cool, has plenty of power, but that's got me questioning the reliability a little bit because it comes with a mild hybrid system as well. It's turbocharged, and especially with those S trim levels with the boost pressure turned up a little bit more, I really don't know what the reliability is going to be like. Mazda has a decent reputation for reliability. I will say that. So I guess time will tell, but that's my little worry for now. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the CX-90 in the comments section below. And that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews, because that is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know. I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.